Hello Internet! Welcome to The Collective Arcana, a channel all about tabletop gaming. I wanted to talk about the Critical Role Minis uh, as I work on them. And today I wanted to work on Keyleth because I just think this is the coolest. Um, I just finished the Pumat Souls, which uh, I might do a video on. They don't need a lot of um, explanation. They're really good sculpts, but I might do a quick one anyway. Um, but Keyleth here, before I get started painting on her, she needs a little bit of prep work. So I just kind of wanted to walk you through uh, the process that I go through. So first I want to make sure I fill all the gaps. And I've only seen a couple on her. So the first one, if you look right here on her neck, there's a pretty deep gap. So I want to fill that in and make it look seamless. And then there's another one right here. And for that, I'll use uh, some Millet Putt. So for flash lines, all you have to do is take an X-Acto knife and literally just cut them away. So I'm not going to do that on camera too much because it's too hard to see, but... Um, I mean, as you can see, just cutting them away makes a big difference. But then I also like to go in with a metal file and just sand them out too, like after I, that's milliput dust, but, um, but yeah, so it's just a combination of, of a little bit of filing and, and cutting away with the X-Acto knife. Sometimes I even cut, depending on how confident you are, um, I'll cut a little extra more than where the line was especially if there's a lot of texture or something there and it'll blend in so you can barely see it so a lot of her flash lines are on the edges right there across her foot see it's pretty bad right there looks like she's got one on her hairline there She's got one on the back of her arm, right there. And I know that they're hard to see, but they really show up on a painted mini if you don't, if you don't take them out. She's also got them up her staff on the edges. And again, this is probably not something most people even care about, but I just, I can't unsee it. So I'm gonna go in with the file and round off some, some of these seams and get her nice and cleaned up. The next thing I'm gonna do after I clean up all those is to take some Milliput and fill in any gaps. So there's a pretty big gap here between her head and her neck where it looks like it was maybe two pieces originally. And then there's a pretty big one here too. So I'm just going to fill those in, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. I'm not going to show you cutting all these off because I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but um, the real trick is finding those. And something you can do as well, you can paint the whole mini one color and then dry brush it, and you'll find those, those lines pretty quickly. So for an example, if you're going to prime your mini in black, go ahead and hit it with a white dry brush just really quickly, really lightly, and they will pop out which I would show you with her, but I'm actually not going to prime her with black. I want to, I want her to have vibrant colors, so um, I'm not going to prime with a dark color like I, I would for, say, something with darker armor. So Milliput is a two-part putty that you mix together, and, and it basically turns into this, this clay that will dry, and then it becomes almost like plastic, so uh, you can polish it, you can sand it and it's really great it bonds um, plastic too so if you had a broken mini um, this stuff will help you out too we talk about milliput non-stop on this channel i'm not even gonna pretend we don't i might do a whole video on how we use it we use it to uh, make mods like change weapons or sculpt different hair and all sorts of crazy stuff so um, anyway but for this we're going to use it to fill in these gaps Milliput is super easy to work with. Um, I mixed some up already and I made way too much. So 
So here in our neck, um, I'm just gonna literally smash it in and then we're gonna blend it. This is just a sculpting tool. You don't need a fancy sculpting tool. I just have a lot of craft things in my house and I found it super easy. I'm gonna try to do this on camera. So I'm literally trying to force it in that gap. Go a little bit off there. So as you can see, I didn't do anything fancy. I didn't try to make it pretty. And that's because um, when you water this down, you can kind of wipe away the excess and it will auto sand. Like you don't have to go in and sand after it if you do this part right. And all I do is I get a Q-tip and these are, again, this is just um, extra crafty teeny tiny Q-tips that I find helpful for minis, but you don't need anything fancy to do this. You can use a regular Q-tip. I usually just use my finger, but this is kind of a tiny spot. So I'm just gonna again, just get it smashed up in there. I'm gonna get a little excessive with the water. And now I'm gonna go through and clean up anything that's not directly where that is so I can get my detail back. So I'm actually gonna need to see for that. So, <laughs> so as you can see, it's almost all gone on the surface, but it's settled down in the seam where we want it to blend. So now once this is all painted, you won't even ever be able to tell that there was anything there. And you can also go in with um, something fine like this, like a needle or something, and go back in and carve out that detail. As long as it's in the deepest parts, I mean, you can, you can just smooth it over. So as you can see, it's barely even noticeable. You can barely see it. And maybe that's why some people don't worry about it because it seems like such a minor thing, but it really does help. It really makes it look so much better. I would say you could get away with not doing this one, but <laughs> that's just not how I roll. You could also cover up seam lines with the same method, depending on if, if it's just in a weird place and you can't get your, your um, tool in there. You could absolutely just milliput a little bit over and create some new texture over it. So with this one, I'm just going to use my hand, really work it in with some water. This is really hard to do on camera. <laughs> so now I'm going to clean it up. Got a little extra on there, but it, it won't hurt anything. So that's all that is, it's super easy. Uh, if you put enough water in it, it'll sand itself out. So it's not too bad to do. I don't really see any other spots on her that need it. Um, the last thing I'll say about this mini for the prep work is uh, the staff is a little bent. So I'm gonna run it under, or let it sit in some really hot water just this part and then I'm gonna hold it to shape and let it cool and that should straighten it out a little bit. So I wanted to talk about some of the things I've run into so far this far in the process. So my main issue is that her sculpt doesn't actually make a ton of sense close up um, on the top part of her dress which I've talked to some people in, in the painting groups and stuff and um, it, it seems like I'm not the only one that sort of had this um, reaction but the sides which I did finally figure out um, and had to kind of improvise <laughs> um, but if you look very close they don't actually match on the sides so I added in these stripes this way so as you can see those are two separate stripes like right oops here And then on this side, they're not even separated. It looks like a completely different dress on each side. Um, we ended up having to literally try to sketch out and figure out what was going on here. And the other thing that was a little strange were the, the strips up the in the front here. 
and then if you look there's a weird like seam that I'm just gonna ignore <laughs> not really sure what to do with that and it doesn't look that bad I mean it's not a huge deal it's just frustrating when you're trying to plan out your colors and you can't really tell what's going on with the sculpt so I thought it might be helpful to kind of outline what I saw I noticed a lot of people are just painting this one color and it still looks great so that might be the way to go um, but I really love doing the little tiny details so I just tried to figure it out the best I could the other issue I ran into was her colors so in the artwork on the box um, in the animated cartoon promos she's wearing green but she's kind of known for her red cape and then Marisha actually wears red in the critical role um, opening when they do like the, the costumes so I was really torn and I kind of honestly wish I would have just done the whole thing red but it's kind of hard to argue with the the animated you know promos so I ended up doing the red and green and I cannot unsee that this looks like Christmas. <laughs> um, why it assures me that these are traditional colors and it doesn't look Christmassy, but I mean, with the gold trim and everything, it, it does to me. So um, I think at this step, I'm probably gonna add some blue tones to the green and maybe some orange to the red just to throw it off maybe. I don't even know if that will help. Um, and for the back of her cape, I'm gonna do a lot of oranges and yellows and, and that won't look so bad but you can't see that from the front so um i'm not as crazy about how she's turning out as i'd hoped but i think it's mostly because of the colors i've picked um i'm tempted to strip it down again but there are so many minis to paint and i need to move on so i'm not going to but but i'll just move forward and see if i can fix it somehow and check back in as soon as uh she's done Oh, and in case you're wondering, this is a just cheap, like, 50 cent, like, decorative wood thing I got from the hobby store, and it makes a really great paint handle and, uh, and poster tack. So I finished painting Keyleth, and I'm just going to go ahead and apologize for my voice. I seem to have lost it. Um, but anyway, I was able to break up some of those Christmas colors by using orange and yellow in a couple of different places. I used an orangey yellow highlight here on the highest points of her cape. You can see it's it's very subtle. I did it in very light washes, very gradual, and it gives it just enough to break it up, I think. That and her cape, which I did in all oranges and reds and um, yellows so they look like leaves, really helped with, with that whole Christmas vibe. What I did on the back here was I just dotted yellow and orange and red, especially um, on the highest points of the cape just so they'd stick out a little bit more um, and I did a gradient underneath all that and then I sort of followed the same pattern for this top bit here and for her staff I looked at some artwork and I noticed that it was a wooden staff and then the gold wrapped up around it so the sculpt was a little funky to follow but I kind of made it up where the plastic didn't make sense and it worked out but the bulb on the top of her staff is just metallic turquoise with a little dot of like this metallic green. I really love the metallic paints. I have them in like every color now. They're really fun on minis. And they're, they're actually really cheap at the craft store. They're not from like Reaper or anything like that. They're just um, good old fashioned craft paint. So next I think I'm gonna be working on Percy. Um, if you want to kind of keep up with that progress, I usually post on Twitter and stuff as I'm working on it. Um, so just give us a follow if you'd like. Uh, otherwise, if you could subscribe to this channel, you can see uh, the tutorials and the tips and tricks videos as I work on them. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for you to um, work on your miniature. Give us a like and a subscribe and we'll see you next time.